Hello everyone, welcome to our tea service this 22nd of November and it's the Sunday when we specially remember that Christ is King. It's the final Sunday of the church year and we round up all that we've seen and learned and, and walked along with uh, all that we've known about Jesus this last 12 months and we proclaim Christ is King. And then, of course, next Sunday is Advent Sunday and we start all over again um, going through the church year, um, above all, celebrating and walking with Jesus, our Lord, our King. Um, so welcome. I hope that we're all doing OK in this second lockdown. Please do get in touch if um, there's anything any of us can help with or do or just pick up the phone for a chat. I know that lockdown's really hard for many of us. Um, we're not able to gather again, obviously. Um, and then next month, December, we won't be having a tea service. But January, let's pray that January we can gather again and meet at Rogers Hall for a time of fellowship and tea and cake, as well as this little service. Because of the lockdown, unfortunately, we won't be able to have the coffee morning next Saturday. Um, but we are hoping in December that we'll be able to gather at church again. We are hoping to have our service of lessons and carols in the evening of the 13th of December at six o'clock. Um, it will need to be booked in for, but, you know, watch this space. We will be giving notices about that. Um, but for today, let's just relax and celebrate Christ is King. And we're going to start this evening, this afternoon um, with a wonderful hymn, Christ, no, praise my soul, the King of heaven. That's who he is, the King of heaven, the King of earth and the King of our lives. So let's praise him in this hymn.
Let's now pray a prayer of confession. I'll say it on all of our behalf. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done wrong in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to sing again. Lovely hymn, Be Thou My Vision. And when we've sung this, Paul will read our Bible reading. And we'll have another hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Paul will bring us his talk for this afternoon. And we'll sing again. So... Let's join in with this hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Today we celebrate Christ the King. We read about him in our Bibles. We worship him in our church and in our daily prayers. But that little phrase from today's gospel, they worshipped him but some doubted, verse 17, seems to me to be a good description of what ha often happens when we approach this God whom the church celebrates Christ the King. Worship and doubt stand side by side. 
The disciples, people who knew Jesus, who followed him for three years, they doubted. That they doubted doesn't mean they had no faith or they didn't believe. Rather, they gave their hearts to him, but in their heads, they couldn't make sense of or understand what was happening. They were of two minds. Their hearts and their heads were not aligned. Part of the experience made sense, but another part didn't. The experience was real. The logic and the understanding, however, were unable to match the depth and reality of their experience. Is it surprising, then, that we, who only know him in our hearts, and didn't have the experience of physically being with him, have doubts. How strong is your faith? Come to that, what is faith? Is it how well you understand the Bible and the doctrines of Christianity? After 60 years of being a professed Christian, my knowledge of the Bible is sadly lacking. Every time I read a bit of it, which I do every day, I find something I'm sure I'd never seen before. When it comes to the doctrines of Christianity, I'm at a loss. 42 articles, what are they? I've read them, but don't ask me to repeat them. 95 theses pinned on a church door by Luther. No idea. I have a copy of them, but again, not in my memory. The five marks of faith, the diocesan mission statement, the Athanasian Creed, the Vanity. There's so much to know and remember. Not surprising, just beyond many of us. On Friday last, we celebrated the life of Edmund, King of the East Angles. He memorized the 150 Psalms so that he could recite them every day. I have one or two texts from the Bible that I love, and often I can't remember how to start them. That text Psalm 19, verse 17, that I used to start my sermon. Whenever I use it, I write it down for fear that I should dry up on the day. Another of my favourites, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. And that's from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. I often need to be reminded of the opening words to get started. Thank goodness I don't have to sit a test every time I go to church. I'm guessing when it comes to matters of faith, lots of us prefer to take a back seat. That's wrong. Faith is not about memorising words from the Bible, nor about being able to recite the doctrines of the church. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to know that God is love, and the best way to get along with others is to love your neighbour as yourself. You don't have to pass an ecclesiastical test in order to pray for someone who's hurting or to forgive someone who's hurt you in some way. You don't have to be able to defend the doctrine of the atonement or explain the Trinity in order to share the good news. Just know that Christ died for the forgiveness of sins, that we might receive the promise of eternal life through faith in him. You don't have to know all that much. Because what matters most is not how much you know, but how much you care. God loves you and I love you too can be all it takes to lead to someone to Christ the King. Look at what Jesus did with 12 ordinary men. He taught them about the kingdom of God and he showed them how to live in community with each other. After he ascended into heaven and they were filled with the power of his spirit, they went out to plant the seeds of the gospel in Africa, in Asia, and in Europe. As a result, the Church of Jesus Christ prospered and grew to worldwide proportions. It doesn't take an army to win the world for Christ. All it takes is a few good men and women who are willing to follow Jesus and invite others to join them. Little things can make a big difference. Lots of small contributions add up to a healthy church budget. And when those who have little give generously of what they have, it inspires those who have much to do the same. Whether it's your time, your gifts or your service to others, little things can make a big difference 
when you are unwilling to entrust what you have in the Lord to Christ the King. Greatest illustration of all this, when God saw the sinfulness of man and how we revert back to our sinful ways time and time again, he intervened once and for all, not in some cataclysmic event, but in the birth of a baby born in the little village of Bethlehem. Who'd have thought, looking down at this tiny baby lying in a manger, that he was the Son of God, the Saviour of the world? Christ the King. Let's see if we can bring this home. We're living in a perilous time. The problems of the world are staggering. Starvation and hunger, wars and rumour of your wars, the ever-growing threat of terrorism, the rapidly changing mores of society, the precarious state of the economy worldwide, and now a worldwide pandemic. The problems are so overwhelming we don't know where to start. The good news is, it's not up to us. God is on our side. Christ the King will have the last word. Let us pray. Lord, give us courage to speak and act in faith, confident that your word will not return empty and void, but will accomplish your purposes according to your will. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to care So, in the name of Jesus, let us bring our prayers now to the throne of grace, to the King of Heaven. Jesus Christ, 
great High Priest, living forever to intercede for us. We pray for your Church, your broken body in the world, especially your Church and your people who are suffering at this time because of following you, because of proclaiming you as their King. May they especially know your courage and sustaining grace. We pray for your church here in Rugby and especially in Hillmorton during this time of lockdown, that in whatever we do we may honour you and may we share your love to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, King of Righteousness, enthroned at the right hand of the Majesty on high, we pray for the world and we pray that it will one day become subject to your rule, your gentle rule. We pray for those leaders in authority in our nation and in nations across our world that they will subject themselves to your gentle rule and authority, that all will be done with justice, integrity and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, Son of Man, drawing humanity into the life of God, we pray for all our brothers and sisters in any kind of need, distress or sorrow. And we pray quietly in our hearts now for any we know who are suffering or who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, pioneer of our salvation, bringing us to your glory through your death and resurrection, we pray for all who are dying, that they may trust in your promises. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, Lord of all things, ascended far above the heavens and filling the universe, please strengthen us to use the gifts you give us for your work in your service. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, first fruits of the new creation, keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace until you bring the whole created order to worship at your feet. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Shall we join in saying the Lord's Prayer together in the traditional form? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we're going to sing our final hymn together now, great hymn of praise. How great thou art.
Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Pray that you have a good rest of the day. And I pray that we will be able to all gather soon. We trust that we will be in touch and see each other very soon. And now, let me say a prayer of blessing. May God give to you and all those whom you love his comfort and his peace his light and his joy in this world and the next. And shall we say together the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. May peace be with you.